Let's talk about the Oregon Ducks. Oregon Ducks. I'll get to their schedule. Matt will pull that up in a minute. Dean, let's get our ducks in a row. Right here, <laughs> is, this is the part of the show you've been waiting on. Oregon Ducks. We have heard a lot of talk that they may be the ones to win it. I don't know. Dean's going to put a case out here on the table for you. You make your own decision. That's what we do. We just break it down and tell I think you. we had them number two. Uh, make o- your own decision. Oregon Ducks. All right. 12-2 and two last year. Lost twice to Washington. Ended up in the top, what, six, seven, eight. Uh, Dylan Gabriel comes over from Oklahoma. Oklahoma, and he is considered he is considered the best quarterback in the country right now. Am I right on that? Yes. They, he the, is the top. Most of the media guy. people, he's like a 90% per, percentage, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, of course, they lose, lose Bo Nix, but they think Dylan Gabriel is the perfect – yeah. replacement for Bo Nix. I don't think so. I don't know. Nick's had a good career there. Uh, four returning linemen, starters. Lines huge, great. They lost their best running back, Bucky Irving, but they returned Jordan James, 759 yards. Quality. And Noah Whittington, who has gained over 1,500 yards in his career. So they're hoping James and Whittington can make up for Irving. They lost their top receiver, Troy Franklin, but they've got Tez Johnson. This was their second receiver. 1,200 yards. He's good. And Matt? That Go Ducks, I was telling you on YouTube. Yeah. So I've been watching about them. Yeah. That boy's good. Oh, Tess Johnson. He's very is. good. He may be one of the better receivers in, in the, the country. country. Just, yeah. I'm telling you, y'all just listen right here. I'm telling you. This guy's good. Tess, 12 touchdowns, 10 <laughs> touchdowns, 1,200 yards. The other receiver on the other side will be former Alabama receiver, Tr- Trishon Holden. Oh, yeah. 37 catches, 400 yards. Not quite as good as Johnson, but they're thinking he's going to have a breakout year. Hold up. 37 catches is still good. Uh, Tight ends back. He's one of the best in the country. Terrence Ferguson, 42 catches, six touchdowns. There's no doubt that their offense is great, but what do you think the main problem is, with it, as it is with a lot of West Coast teams? Defense. Well, playing defense is the thing. Mm-hmm. But I'll say this, and from watching that, again, I keep YouTube, type in Go Ducks. You can watch this little documentary. Um, Here's something that I'll say could be a problem for them since we're doing – you're saying talking about offense now. Right, right. Defense is usually a problem. But I'm going to say because Dan Lanning is a Kirby Smart slash Nick Saban guy. Mm-hmm. They're going to be all right. They're going to be okay. But here's the thing, offense. This is just my opinion. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching it. Gabriel is good. Um, I, I'm about as big a fan of him as I am Quinn Ewers. I think they're good. I don't put them in that elite category like most all media does, and that's okay. We all got different opinions. Dean, he's got to learn a. He's got to learn another the offense. Now he's a fifth year offense. senior. He's good. Right. Smart. This guy's been in plenty of rooms, and and he studied under. Yeah. From Riley, yeah, studied under him. Okay, he's he's been around. He is. He's, but to learn, I just think a different style of offense. I'm just not. I don't know. I'm I'm just I'm just playing very reserved right now. Well, defensively, they lost some starters, but they had a great defensive offseason transfer portal. Had two linemen come in: one from Michigan State, one from Wake Forest. The D line's going to be pretty good, but they don't put a lot of pressure on the quarterback. They want them to get better at that. Jordan Birch leads the D line. He had eight tackles for a loss. Linebackers are led by Jeffrey Bossa and Jess, Justin, not Justin, Justin Jenkins. Hmm. All right. They're pretty solid as a whole. They like them. Give up 318 yards a game last year. Yes. Defense did. That's not, I mean, it's that's. Uh, you don't want nothing over 300. No, no. But most of that, now Washington, most of that was to Washington. Touch the board, but put yeah. it on twice. Uh, secondary is led by Tashim Johnson. They racked up in the transfer portal in the secondary. Four transfers. Duke's Brandon Johnson, 128 career tackles. K-State's Kobe Savage, 115 tackles, six picks. And two other guys. They got five. They run that four two five a lot. Four, they're starting five in the secondary will be uh, transfers. 
can they fit into that system? See, I tend to think they may not mash. They're good, especially this kid from Duke and K-State. But I don't know, you know. Here's the thing. They don't play in the Oregon system. If our kids are smarter now, okay, we think, right? Uh, football-wise, have more because they play access. all these darn camps. Yes, so they have more access to stuff. Defensively, it's still a different game. I, what I'm, I'm just saying, these new guys can they come in and how quick can they catch up? But it's kind of not a, it's not a crazy thing for kids to come to new school and just catch right on. Well, yeah, but you got five starters trying to just catch right on. I don't. <laughs> I think that's the title. No, we're talking about, talking about one, like Keon Saab come from yeah. Michigan to Bama. Uh, maybe six. <laughs> I don't think so, man. I don't see it. I, I do think they'll make the playoffs, but I don't see this national championship. You think it's – and you think it's just from just from the point of – because of some of the – maybe some confusion because of them coming in and, and, and just not knowing the system right now, I mean, right away. Gabriel. I mean, now most of their guys on offense are back. And this Tess Johnson and these running backs are good now. But let's take a look at the other schedule. I, that's one of the reasons I like them to be in the playoff is because of what we're fixing to see. All right. Game one starting August the thirty first, Saturday. It's at uh six thirty our time. Um Idaho. They're done. Okay. There's that's one loss. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Boise, they'll play Boise State at nine o'clock at night at Autism Stadium in Oregon. Their first three games are at home. Then they play Oregon State Beavers. The Civil War is going to happen. Chance. Game any, three. Any chance? Why so early? I don't just know. Because of the new. Well, I guess because they're. So there might not be a rivalry rivalry week this year like it usually is. Well, they're they're going to play Washington again. The last game of the year. Oh, okay, so that's the big matchup. Right? But Washington's terrible. They lost all oh, the players and all the coaches. Dante Moore is Oregon's back. Yes, right, yep. So, they're good to go at quarterback. Well, and did you ever – one of the guys that practice I was running into seeing a lot at Oregon, uh, Dickey. Mm-hmm. There's a Dickey kid that was looking good at practice. I'm anxious to see how Holden does. Probably because he played for Alabama. You know, I didn't think he was bad at Alabama. No, he wasn't bad. I didn't think he was a game-breaker. I guess let's see here. I think they'll be three and oh. And then they go to UCLA, who according to what you've read is not supposed to be very good, are they? Check. 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 They're off the twenty first. Then we'll get into September twenty eighth. Any chance UCLA upsets? No, absolutely not. Okay. Um then the October the fourth, they're gonna get in a conference play. They're gonna play Michigan State, which is uh they're in the middle of a, a building sort at night at eight o'clock on Fox. Um, any chance they upset Ohio State? No, I don't. I don't know. I, my first gut is no because of okay. the the staff is just. Well, we're talking about Chip Kelly. Ryan Day's been there a while. Their quarterback's been around just as long as Gabriel as long has. As Gabriel. And I'm gonna go. That I think it'll be a good game. There's a high possibility that Oregon does win that game because it's at Oregon. Mm-hmm. But then they'll rematch and play to uh, maybe a neutral place or whatever. Or, you think it'll? They're uh, going to at least lose once to Ohio. Yes, at least once. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I could see them. I could say we'll say they lose that one. I'll tell you one here in a minute. And I think you probably know which one is. I could see them losing. Later At Purdue, on the they're not great. Hey, Purdue's the upset guy. But now, if Oregon's number one at the time, if they beat Ohio State and then have Purdue next week, don't listen, guys. Don't laugh. I didn't hear much. Of, I've not heard much about Purdue in this offseason. Listen, you heard it here first. If Oregon beats Ohio State on October the 12th, on the 18th of October, they go to Purdue every stinking time Purdue plays a number one team. That's the last team you want to play, right? At Purdue. You're Purdue, done. They, Purdue beats them. <laughs> Wait, there, there's a statistic out there. It's crazy. It's like, Ball up. Yeah, ball up. Yeah. I mean, it's like an 80% chance that Purdue has a beaten the number one team at home. If you Crazy, just if yeah. you just become number one a week or two before, yeah, you overlook them and they just oh. – Purdue. Um, at Michigan. Uh, I, is that a catch game? Yeah. Okay, I think so. It's not the only one either. 
that's one of the catch games at Michigan, uh, Maryland, and Wisconsin. I think that's a catch game. I don't know if he uh, Wisconsin's got a lot that if Finkel's got in this team, they're done. They ain't going. You don't think there's no way? What Washington and Maryland don't have the highlighted three teams are ones that is going to have a shot. If you're listening on podcast, we're talking about Ohio State at Michigan and at Wisconsin. So two road games. Yeah, I could give them a win versus Ohio State here because it's at home. So I could say I could. But you think they lose one of those two, don't you? But they're going to have to play them again. Yeah, I think I gave them ten and a half. But these games here at Michigan and at Wisconsin, they they it's. I know people are laughing right now. I, I get it, and you're so mad. There's no way, you know, Wisconsin. They're not uh, well. Coach Finkel's he's a pretty good yeah, coach. You go over there, look when they play there too. It's in November, so it's probably going to be snowing. This is Thanksgiving. So, them West Coast boys that are from mid out in the Midwest, some from California, a lot of Islanders are on that Oregon right. team. These kids are from Hawaii. They're not used to snow. They wear flip-flops year-round. And you go out there and lace up, and you put on that old long sleeve, and you go out there on the field, and you can't feel your hands. Yeah, yeah. It's different. And I think Finkel. It's not Finkel, is it? Is it Finkel? Fickle. Fickle. I'm saying Finkel. Right, Finkel. Finkel and Einhorn. Finkel uh, and Einhorn. I just think they're going to be better. I saw where they got a lot of starters back, and they're expecting a decent year out of them. I just think it's a possible catch game. Well, and Michigan's not just – Michigan's not going to be trash. We tend to – and I'm, I'm one you. of the worst ones about it. I'm I tend to you. think they're just going to be terrible now. They didn't lose literally everybody. I'm just saying, I've played them on the game, and if you've played NCAA 25, it has the actual live depth chart of the real players. Yeah. They're not bad. Yeah. Yeah, they're not going to be bad. Well, plus they've got a tradition in there. You know, Alabama won four, six under Saban, and their next team didn't win it. Well, one of them did. But uh, most of the next teams didn't win it, but they wasn't bad. No. Uh, there's I got them at ten and a half, man. That means a eleven and one to ten and two. I don't I don't think they go nine and three. No, no, no. Uh -uh. Michigan and I, may catch them because it's at Michigan. I'm I would probably if I bet money, I would bet they beat Wisconsin. I, would, I, I yes, think they got too much firepower. Yeah. The Wisconsin's defense can't stop them. I would think so. But Ohio State I don't know. It's got it there, and that's going to be a big game because they're both going to be undefeated. But it's going to be at, it's at Oregon. That's going to be the biggest game, and that's going to be your prime time. I'm sure it's going to be at night. Everybody's going to be watching. Nobody's going anywhere. It's going to be it's going to be in Oregon. Mm. So I like to nod towards the home team. I did with Tennessee. I got Tennessee beating Alabama at Tennessee. I just it'd be tough. It's tough to, you know, it's if hard. Ohio State's going to lose the game, I think that LSU probably it's not game in L at LSU, Bama. I kind of go with the home team. Or going to be okay against Washington that last game. Yeah, Washington, Washington did lose a lot. Yeah, they? they got the new coach from uh, Fish from Arizona. Arizona, yeah, he's a good coach. Got him a good staff. Uh, I think he's got him a quarterback from what I heard the other day that he's he's confident with. They're going to try to build and and win. Uh, I think Coach DeBoer. He give an identity to Washington. Uh -huh. give he them, did. I mean, he give them something. Hey, I mean, you know, we hadn't like, heard much of them in a while. Come in there and recruit in the top twenty-five in the nation, uh -huh. and take them to a national championship game with a twenty-fifth, seventh-ranked <laughs> recruiting class. Down, snots, down. <laughs> what in the world? Get out! Quit eating my cord. No, he's, just, he's in my shoes. That's a salt cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of there. I'm like uh, ten and a half for Oregon. They're going to lose one, maybe two. Maybe two. I don't see them losing three. No, no. Uh -huh. I'll be honest with you. And I, how many teams are 130 something? I'd say this schedule, this schedule, as far as toughness, may not even be in the top 40 or 50. Michigan, Ohio State, or they're still, you know, tough opponents for them. But other than that, I mean, Oregon State is going to play them tough because it's a rival it's a game. Rivalry. Washington probably will. They'll play them tough too. But you got Idaho, Boise. Yeah. Michigan State, Purdue and Illinois, not traditionally good. They got Maryland in there, too, who's not. I know they beat Auburn in the bowl game, but they're still not good. No, no, Auburn. And Hugh Freeze wasn't very happy about that either. Well, I hope not. Yeah, uh, I hope not. So, they play – some of the teams they play – Is there any possible way that Oregon goes undefeated? 
Yeah, I think it's possible. If they beat Ohio State, if they pick up, if they beat Ohio State at home, yes. But I think they'll lose. I do not think this is going to be a game. But they may beat Ohio State at home, then they may roll roll in there and dump one of Wisconsin because it's cold. It's November. It's then they may have a spring like day up there, and it be seventy. We know know what the Mother Nature holds for us on weather. Yeah. Yeah, or you may a, go to Ohio State. And it, I mean, it may snow out in Oregon when Ohio State comes out. It there. may have a, a big rain storm. Yeah, rain storm monsoon. You playing a monsoon? Or players? You know, you got players getting so hurt. So that means you got to run the ball. And, <laughs> and Ohio State's running game is way yeah. better than Oregon's. Yeah, and Oregon does got a decent running game, but I don't think it matches up with. Can Oregon's defense and these five? Here's the last part. Can Oregon's transfers, this defensive group, can they learn the game? That's the big if. Quick enough mm-hmm. to handle Mbakwe and Richard Young and handle Junkins and Henderson in the backfield. Right. And how is Dylan Gabriel, who's the best defense? He's fixed, he'll see Caleb Downs. And the yeah, other guy. Yeah, no, offside does have a good defense. They got another guy beside Caleb Downs that plays beside him out there. Yeah. I don't know much about their defense. They're good. They're and, and their linebacker. He's the daggum coach that he's like Nick Bosa Jr. <laughs> yeah, you told me that. Story. He's just freaking shoulders and neck and muscles and looks like AJ Hawk out there. Yeah, AJ Hawk. He was a good player. Hall of Famer. So I don't. It just don't seem like by looking at their players, Ohio State's mm-hmm. locked in. And yes, I know Ohio State's got new players too. Yeah, they do. They but they're five star freaks too. from Buford, yeah. Georgia. Yeah, now there's a difference from a three star guy that played it some middle of the place down here in in Louisiana or, or Alabama. Now these two safeties that come over, these two defensive backs that are going they're not Caleb Downs. They're good, but they're not Caleb Downs type. Yeah, there's a difference, guys. Yeah. So when you're recruiting like well, we're rec- we're recruiting the number best players in our state. Yeah, but are your players in your state nationally ranked? Right. Because yeah. if you control the state of Georgia and you recruit all those top five star kids, uh, you probably got a good football team. Because yeah. there's about yeah. twenty. There's right. there are twenty five stars in Georgia. There's about five in Alabama. Uh, oh yeah, Georgia's got a lot more. Because it's just bigger. Uh, there's not a lot of unbelievable. Let's see what John is all here. here compared to Georgia. No, it's just not, and we're not being ugly. No, uh, no, no. That was at the girls' state championship spring at halftime at Spring Garden. Uh, either volleyball, basketball, or both. Not sure. And Chloe will be home. Shout out to Chloe Rule playing at Wallace State a with a girls' year. basketball team and Stagum. Boy, they they're gonna be they're gonna be good. Who's that? Wallace State girls' basketball. <laughs> Let's look at our top twenty-five, Dean. I just a second. I got a player saying need it after practice. I ain't gonna make it. <laughs> All right, our top 25 goes like this. Comment section, hit us down there below and open it together and tell us where we're crazy or where you like and agree. Um, I'll say first, the bottom line here, 21 through 25, is kind of just plug and play whoever you think may be a win eight or nine games or something maybe. Right, right. But we feel like our top 10 is fairly fairly solid with everybody else in the middle two rows, 11 through 20 or you could probably move some of those around, and I wouldn't argue with anybody about if you moved Oklahoma State and if you swapped them with Michigan, I, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I'm still okay with my top. I don't know about Tech. You know, we could swap Texas around a little bit now. Yeah. I might have to move Georgia. I mean. Swap them? Yeah, I don't know. I might have to drop them to six. Uh, oh, we got Ole Miss six. All right, podcast people, we got Ohio Wait. State one. Two is Oregon, then we got Texas, Georgia, Bama finishing out at five, and then six through ten we got Ole Miss, Penn State, Utah Utes, Mizzou at nine, Notre Dame at ten, uh, eleven through fifteen we got Miami, uh, Oklahoma State, Tennessee in the middle at thirteen, Michigan at fourteen, and LSU at fifteen, Florida State sixteen, North Carolina State Wolfpack seventeen, Oklahoma eighteen, Clemson nineteen, K State at twenty, and then twenty one through twenty five we like. Um, and these are all interchangeable, especially the first three. A and M, Southern Cal, and Arizona. Eh, you know, and we I had to put Virginia Tech. They're tremendously underrated. I feel like Virginia Tech plays Miami probably for the ACC title this year. I'm mm-hmm. just saying. 
And Kentucky. I do, too. I don't know. With 22 starters back. I don't know. Yeah, and their quarterback's drones of a freak. And Kentucky, I think they could hang around. I think – I like Vandergriff. I do, too. And I like their running back. And the kid – he, it's the Tatum kid. He come from – his name's Tatrium something. I can't pronounce it. I say train them, but train I don't them. think that's right. But he's from Ohio State. and I he got Trinatham. He got a lot of carries behind Henderson. He is the running back at Kentucky now, guys. Yes. So, so I don't know if people just don't know that and they he, forgot, but he was uh well what people don't know is he was he was Ohio State's running back for a better part of half the year. Six, seven hundred yards for Ohio State. Yeah, we're not talking about he just run the ball out at McNeil. Well, we're up thirty seven nothing. Yeah. Chip, go in. Yeah, he didn't play at Louisiana La Tech. No. No, this was Ohio State's running. Is there any um, – I'm not – I'm just not high on Notre Dame. I'm just not. I don't see it. A lot of that's called Leonard's there. I don't – I just don't see it. I don't think they're that great. I can't believe people's got them at five or six. Uh, I like Miami at 11. Yeah. I think they're a good football team. I think this is probably their year. Uh, Oklahoma State, we know quarterback play, offense, Gordon Jr. is probably a Heisman contender for sure. LSU, I am not – why are people high on them? Wait just a second. This is this player. Why are people not high on well, I don't know why they like LSU so much. I don't understand. What is the deal? Their defense was terrible last year. Their defense is not going to be much any better. Uh, Nussmeyer is good. Um, you know, how well are they going to run the ball? They're definitely – LSU always grows a huge lineman up front. But I just don't see them being a top-10 team. Uh, Florida State – I don't. I don't know. I mean, I agree with you. We don't disagree, and I know y'all think. Uh, North Carolina State, Oklahoma, and Clemson kind of in the middle there. Clemson's going to be okay, I guess. I don't know, man. I'm you know, not I heard somebody fan. say last night. I'm just not a fan of Klubnik. I'm just not. Saying that Georgia, that was, they were just worried about that. And I'm like, well, I just don't think so. No, I wasn't worried about Clemson, Georgia fans. No, I mean, no, it ain't going to be easy. You're not going to go out there and beat them 35 to nothing. And I'm just being nice here. We felt like a and We had to put them somewhere on the bottom. They are going to win eight or nine games. USC's going – man, they got a totally different – when I was when I watched Oregon, when I was watching Oregon, um, so on their Big Ten patches on their jersey. Yeah. I don't know. I just can't believe it. They're Big Ten. I know. USC, I like Oregon. <laughs> These are – they're what – it's just strange for old people like us. So yeah, I don't. Y'all, I mean, I'm over it now, but I don't like it. But when the season starts, I'm still going to be like. And we do think Colorado's going to be a little better. No, six and six at least. Yeah, right? maybe. And I think that's going to be a plus for them going to the Big Twelve. We'll see. Utah and Central Florida. That may be your best quarterback in the country. But well, don't count him out. Rising. Yeah, just don't. Don't forget, and don't forget, too, that Dante Moore is the backup at Oregon. Yeah, so they may be okay either way. May. All right, that's enough show for tonight. We're glad y'all come by and hung out with us. Show 248 is in the